Greetings and welcome back. It's me, the internet's favorite integral solver slash Soviet era math nerd slash Scottish vampire. And I have a very cool log trig integral today. It's been quite a while since I actually took on one of these. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log cosine theta divided by 1 plus sine square theta d theta. And to approach the solution development, first of all, I'd like to introduce something that I have been experimenting with recently, and that is expressing cosines and sines in the integrand in terms of tangent functions, because tangents are actually quite nice to work with. So, for example, we have sine theta here, which can be expressed as tangent theta times cosine theta. Now, cosine theta here is the reciprocal of secant theta, and secant and tangent have a very nice relationship. We know that secant square equals 1 plus tangent square, so that means cosine theta equals 1 by square root 1 plus tangent square theta, and this implies that sine theta here is actually tangent theta divided by root 1 plus tangent square theta. And now we can plug in this information into our integral, which means that i here is now the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log, let's see, we have 1 by root 1 plus tangent square theta yeah. divided by 1 plus tangent square theta because we have sine square over there. So tangent square theta divided by 1 plus tangent square theta and the differential element is, of course, d theta. Simpli simplifying the stuff using the properties of the logarithm, we know that log x equals negative log 1 by x. So that means we can write this thing as the negative of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log square root. But square root just means a power of 1 half that can be expressed as the coefficient of the logarithm. So we have 1 half of log 1 plus tangent square theta divided by some stuff in the denominator leading to 1 plus 2 times tangent square theta divided by, of course, 1 plus tangent square theta integration with respect to theta. Okay, cool. Now, we can expand by 1 plus tangent square theta upstairs and downstairs leading to i as negative one half of the integral from zero to pi by two of log one plus tangent square theta divided by one plus two times tangent square theta times one plus tangent square theta d theta. And now we're in place for a very nice substitution here that is letting tangent theta equal to x, which implies that secant square theta d theta equals dx, and we know that this thing here is, of course, secant square theta. And as theta approaches 0, we have x approaching tangent 0, which is 0, and as theta approaches pi by 2, x approaches positive infinity. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals negative 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity now of log 1 plus x squared divided by 1 plus 2x squared dx, which is a really nice looking integral indeed. But how do we plan to solve this thing? Well, we'll just define an integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 plus alpha x squared divided by 1 plus 2x squared dx. That way we know that if we plug in alpha equal to 0, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 divided by 1 plus 2x squared. And we know that log 1 is 0, so the entire thing collapses. So i of 0 is 0, which is a very useful initial condition. And the target case would be, well, negative 1 half of i at 1. Okay, cool. So that means we have a plan in place, and we'll now proceed to differentiate the integral function with respect to the alpha parameter. And on switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha 
of log 1 plus alpha x squared divided by 1 plus 2 x squared dx, and this of course is the derivative of i with respect to alpha. This gives us the integral from 0 to infinity of what exactly? Well, this thing, this 1 plus 2 x squared is just a constant because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha, and the derivative of the log gives us the reciprocal of the argument. And differentiating alpha x squared with respect to alpha, of course, yields us x squared. Okay, cool. That's the derivative of the integral function with respect to alpha. And this is quite a hospitable integral to evaluate because all it needs is a nice partial fraction, partial fraction decomposition. And for that, we have x squared divided by 1 plus 2x squared times 1 plus alpha x squared. Notice that the whole thing is linear in x squared. There is no other term than x squared. There are no x terms other than x squared. So we can just take treat this as the, as the case of having a product of two linear functions of x in the denominator. So we'll just write this as a divided by 1 plus 2x squared plus b divided by 1 plus alpha x squared. And this implies that we have x squared equal to a times 1 plus alpha x squared plus b times 1 plus 2 x squared. And first up, we'll let x squared equal to negative 1 by alpha. So that means we have negative 1 by alpha equal to a times 0 plus b times 1 minus 2 by alpha. 2 by alpha. Yep, that's all right. And this implies that b times alpha minus 2 divided by alpha equals negative 1 by alpha. We have some cancellation. And this implies that b here equals 1 by 2 minus alpha. And now for the a parameter, notice that if we let x equal to 0 over here, if I let x equal to 0, then I have 0 equal to a plus b, which implies that a is just going to be negative b. So this means that a here is equal to negative 1 by 2 minus alpha. And that's our partial fraction decomposition. So a with the term... Uh, in the numerator for 1 plus 2x squared in the denominator. So this implies that x squared divided by 1 plus 2x squared divided by 1 plus alpha x squared equals, so we got negative 1 by 2 minus alpha times 1 plus 2x squared plus what exactly? We have 1 by 2 minus alpha. Terribly sorry about that. 1 by 2 minus alpha times 1 by 1 plus alpha x squared. And all we have to do is integrate the whole thing from 0 to infinity. So this implies that the derivative of i with respect to alpha equals negative 1 by 2 minus alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by 1 plus 2x squared plus 1 by 2 minus alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by 1 plus alpha x squared. And of course, we just have a couple of inverse tangent integrals here. So we have negative 1 by 2 minus alpha. Uh, root 2 is needed, I guess, upstairs and downstairs. And yeah, that's about right. We got 1 by root 2 then inverse tangent of x times root 2 with the limits being 0 and infinity plus 1 by 2 minus alpha and we have 1 by root alpha here and inverse tangent of x times root alpha with the limits being again 0 and infinity and as x approaches 0 for both cases we have inverse tangent 0 which is 0 whereas as x approaches infinity we have the inverse tangent function approaching pi by 2. So that means we can factor out this common pi by 2 term as well as the 1 by 2 minus alpha term and we're left with negative 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root alpha. And everything's looking in order so far. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got a couple of functions of alpha here, we have pi by 2 times uh, negative 1 by root 2 times 1 by 2 minus alpha, 
plus one by, terribly sorry about that, one by root alpha times two minus alpha. So that's the derivative of the integral function complete in terms of the alpha parameter. So now all we have to do is recover back the integral function. And for that, of course, we will integrate with respect to the alpha parameter. So on the left hand side, we have the integral function. And on the right, we have pi by two. Wait a minute, we have negative pi by two times root two times the integral of d alpha divided by two minus alpha. That's pretty standard. And we also have pi by two times the integral of one by root alpha times two minus alpha d alpha. And the first integral here is just going to be well, that's negative log two minus alpha. So we have some cancellation of negative signs. We have pi divided by two times root two times log two minus alpha. And for the second integral, we can make use of a nice little substitution that is letting root alpha equal u, which implies that one by two root alpha d alpha equals du. That means I have to borrow a factor of one half from outside and I'm left with pi times the integral of du divided by u times, oh wait, that's part of the differential element. So we're left with two minus u squared. Pretty easy to evaluate. We just need a nice partial fraction decomposition. So that means we have pi divided by two times root two log two minus alpha plus pi times the integral of, let's see what we have We'll need root two minus u here and root two plus u here, a plus sign in between. That should work out perfectly, but we do need a factor of two times root two to balance that out. And we have everything perfectly balanced as all things should be. So we can factor out pi divided by two times root two and we're left with log two minus alpha minus on integration log root two minus u plus log root two plus u. And of course, we also have a constant of integration c. And recall that u is just root alpha. So I'm going to replace that back. And time to use the properties of the logarithm to get everything into a single log. So, so we have pi divided by two times root two times the logarithm. Uh, what exactly do we have in the numerator? We'll have two minus alpha times root two plus root alpha divided by, okay, so we have root two minus root alpha. And we also have this constant of integration that we need to determine by making use of the initial condition. The initial condition was I of zero equal to zero. So plugging in alpha equal to zero, we have zero on the left equal to pi divided by two times root two times the logarithm of, so we got log two times root two divided by root two plus C. So again, some nice cancellation. And this implies that C here is just negative pi divided by two times root two times log two. And finally, we have the integral function I of alpha expressed as pi divided by two times root two, again, factored out, we're left with log two minus alpha times root two plus root alpha divided by root two minus root alpha plus, no wait, negative sign, and we have log two. And the target case was related to i at alpha equal to one. So plugging in alpha equal to one, we have i of one equal to pi divided by two times root two times the logarithm of two minus one is one times root two. Okay, divided by root two minus, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, square root one is not zero. We have root two plus one divided by root two minus one minus log two. Everything seems much, much better now. And of course, I can combine this into a single logarithm again. So we have pi divided by two times root two times the logarithm of root two plus one divided by two times root two minus one. 
and that is i of 1. But recall that the target case was in fact negative 1 half of i of 1, the target integral that is. So the target integral i equals negative pi by 4 times root 2, that is. So we have negative pi by 4, root 2, log root 2 plus 1 divided by 2 times root 2 minus 1. And we could just call it a day here, but we're going to clean it up slightly more. And I'm going to expand using the conjugate here. We have root 2 minus 1 upstairs and downstairs. So we have pi divided by 4 times root 2 times the logarithm of 2 times root 2 minus 1 squared divided by root 2 squared minus 1 squared. Terribly sorry about that. And, of course, that means we have 1 in the denominator. So we have pi divided by... This is 4, right? But I could write this as pi divided by 2 times root 2. And use that factor of 1 half as an exponent here. So I have 2 times root 2 minus 1 whole thing squared. Wait a minute, much better. All to the 1 half. So that gives me pi divided by 2 times root 2 times the logarithm of root 2 times root 2 minus 1. And then we have finally the target integral equal to pi divided by 2 times root 2 times the logarithm of 2 minus root 2. Meaning that our integral is in fact quite a bit rootful. I would say too rootful. That was a horrible dad joke, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do comment and share the video to promote the channel. Help promote the channel anyway. And do follow me on Instagram for write-ups to all my solution developments. Thank you. See you next time.